The first time they murder Billy, it's an accident. June and Ed are half asleep in each other's arms. They don't hear her husband come home early. When Billy opens the bedroom door, she leaps out of bed trying to keep him from getting at Ed, but June only manages to trip him. Billy stumbles forward and slams his forehead squarely against the corner of the footboard. The second time they murder Billy, it's in self-defense. June and Ed are half asleep in each other's arms. They don't hear her husband come home early. Billy opens the bedroom door and charges in. June leaps out of bed, trying to keep him from getting at Ed, then screams as Billy raises his Glock. He aims at her. She ducks and darts away, and he aims again. This gives Ed time to leap out of bed and grab his brother. They struggle like they must have when they were boys, but Billy won't give up the gun. Finally, Ed throws him down, slamming his forehead squarely against the corner of the footboard. The third time they murder Billy, it's premeditated. June and Ed are half asleep in each other's arms, but June wakes up when she hears her husband grab the handle of the bedroom door, then pause. She nudges Ed, points at the door, and reaches for her nightstand. Ed grabs her arm and shakes his head. She shakes him off, eases open the drawer, and takes out her 38. Billy bought her the gun to make sure she was safe while he was away. When Billy finally opens the door and charges in, his Glock's already raised. She shoots him in the thigh. Billy stumbles forward and slams his forehead squarely against the corner of the footboard. The last time they murder Billy, he finishes the job for them. June and Ed are half asleep in each other's arms. They don't hear her husband come home early. When Billy opens their bedroom door, June tries to leap out of bed, but he shoots from the hallway, hitting her in the shoulder, then through the eye. Ed scrambles for the 38 in her nightstand, but Billy shoots him in the hip, the ribs, his outstretched arm, then the head. The blood drains from Billy's face. His outrage fades. His knees buckle. He stumbles into the bedroom, and to steady himself he leans against the corner of the footboard, which knocks June's body. She slides to the floor in a tangle of sheets. Billy drops the Glock and kneels beside her. He takes her hand. It's limp. Billy still wants to tell her his big news. The reason he came home early. After a couple decades of 18-hour days and 7-day work weeks, he's perfected the reset pill. Now, when a person dies in an accident, their consciousness will flash back 12 minutes to warn them. Everyone will take it daily. Untold millions of lives will be saved, and they'll be free at last to do everything they've always dreamed of doing now his life isn't consumed by work. Billy hears sirens and wonders whether a death has to be accidental to activate the reset. If not, the next time around, maybe he could convince himself to not go home, to not get his Glock from the basement, to not head back to the bedroom. Maybe he and June could work things out and live the lives they'd always wanted. Maybe in time, he could even forgive his brother. A police car stops outside. Feet hammer up the drive. Before they can open the front door, Billy picks up the Glock, puts it to his head, and, in the interest of science, pulls the trigger. The First Time They Murder Billy it was written by Stephen S. Power and performed by Mark Galley. It was dramatised for radio and produced by David Devereaux. The First Time They Murder Billy 
is a Tin Can Audio production. Thank you very much for listening.